In this segment, we will be discussing error correction procedures. What do you see? Bike. Blue. What do you see? Blue. Bike. Do this. What color? Red. What do you see? Bike. Bike. Sometimes students will make errors, inadvertent errors that we don't expect. When these errors do occur, we need to be able to correct them as quickly as possible. Find the stove. Where's the stove? Good. Where's the stove? Find the fork. Good job, where's the stove? The error correction procedure involves a sequence of five trials. An error occurs, and that is followed by representation of the stimulus with a prompt, transfer, distract, check procedure. In other words, the procedure looks almost identical to your errorless teaching procedure, except that here an error has occurred and we need to represent our instruction with the prompt. What is it? Duck. What is it? Chicken. Chicken. What is it? Chicken. Do this. Do this. What is it? Chicken. This is my nose. What's this? Cheeseburger. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Say lives in the zoo. Lives in the zoo. What are these? Bagel. Clap your hands. Great job. Clap your hands was a skill that was supposed to be an easy for Debbie. However, she made an inadvertent error. I then went back to represent my instruction. We want to make sure we represent that instruction before going through the prompt transfer distractor check trials. The reason why that's so important is because we want to avoid chaining an error response with the actual response. We want it to be clear that the only behavior that should happen when I say clap your hands is her clapping her hands. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. And what's this? Shirt. What are these? Bagel. Clap your hands. Excellent. Using error correction procedures avoids student frustration and keeps students from practicing errors. For more information, visit the patent website.